Welcome everybody to my latest video. So we got another uh, trip down memory lane and today I'm just going to tell you about my experiences with the Atari Jaguar. Ah, the Jaguar. Way, uh, man, I remember this thing. I remember first hearing about the Atari Jaguar. And one thing about me is I always was interested in systems that weren't mainstream. I was interested in import systems. Uh, I told you in other videos or possibly future videos to be released. I was interested in TurboGrafx-16, the Turbo Duo, FM Towns Marty, the PCFX, the Super Graphics. Um, all these game systems and games and, you know, that my friends just didn't know existed. Now, when I heard about the Atari Jaguar, I immediately was interested in it. Most people at the time, they remember Atari as those old, you know, the 6800, 7200, 9800, or whatever those numbers were. And that's what, that's all they knew. And yeah, Atari Jaguar, they're releasing a 64-bit system. And at the time, the Nintendo and the Genesis ruled the market. And those were 16-bit. And here comes, you know... Atari with their 64-bit. Keeping in mind, I in the PlayStation, the Saturn weren't released yet, and those were only going to be 32-bit. So back then, you uh, decided everything was based and everything was based on its bits. More bits meant better. I, I I don't even know what a bit is. But anyways, I won Atari Jaguar. I won a one so bad. And my parents actually got me one for Christmas. The thing was, it was the last one in stock at a place called Electronics Boutique in the mall. And in fact, it was the, the display um, console that they had on display. Uh, it was just in the, you know, in the, the window itself. So it wasn't actually used, just taken out of the package, put on display for people to look at behind the window. So I got it uh, for Christmas, and I'm like, oh my god, this is awesome. 64 bits, totally, truly awesome, excellent. And I remember playing it. I open it up, I'm reading everything, and I pop it in. I hook it up to my uh, grandfather's TV, because we had Christmas at my grandparents' house. And I remember playing Cybermorph, and I'm thinking, huh. This, um, hmm, this doesn't seem... 64-bit-ish. It's very dark and gloomy and... Heck, Star Fox looked better than this. And I was just trying to force myself. I'm like, okay, you know what? It, it's a bundled-in game. This is just showing the early stages. You know, we're going to see some awesome stuff later. And and I'm playing the game. There's some areas I'm like, okay, you know. Yeah, it's almost like 3D. All, everything's polygon shape, but it's realistic, and it's almost like 3D. And but deep down inside, I was really like, "This is a bummer." Now, in addition to uh, the packing game Cybermorph, it only had three games released at launch: Trevor McFur and the Crescent Galaxy, uh, Lemmings, and I think Raiden. I had no interest in Lemmings. Raiden looked like it belonged on the Nintendo. So I got Trevor McFur. And it was an okay shooter. Visually, it was pretty nice. Very colorful, vibrant, but gameplay-wise, it was average at best. And I was like, uh, okay, um, not 64-bit-ish, but it's, it's getting better. Okay, let's just uh, hope it gets better soon. <laughs> I just wanted the system to work so badly. Um, the other games I got, Kasumi Ninja. Uh, I actually enjoyed that game. You know, it, was, it wasn't no Mortal Kombat, but at the time I really wasn't as big into fighters as I am now, and I didn't know any better. And I thought, okay, this, this is pretty cool. Some above decent fatalities. Okay, it's playable. Um, what else did I get? Oh, the game I played the hell out of the most. Alien vs. Predator. I love that game. I played that game back to back to back, nonstop, I don't know how many times. 
I thought it was cool that you could play as the Marine, the Alien, or the Predator. Love that game. By today's standards, it is um, horrible. But back then, I loved it. I thought it was the most awesome looking thing I had ever seen. And I played the heck out of that. Now I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Another game I got was uh, was it Iron Soldier. And I remember thinking, okay, a mech game. This is going to be really cool. I spent my hard-earned money on it. Popped it in. And I'm like, ugh. What is going on here? These... This game just looks so bland and boring. It just wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't anything like I expected. And I'm thinking, how in the world can this system be 64 bits and the games don't look anything um, like some of these Super Nintendo games? I mean, their Super Nintendo games look way better than this. The other interesting thing is... um. When you got the Atari Jaguar, the on the back of the box, there were pictures of games to be released. Some of those games never got released. There was one that was like uh, Tiny Toon Adventures. I was looking forward to that, and it never got released. Games that did get released, such as Alien vs. Predator, the the picture that they showed on the, backs of the, on the back of the Jaguar box was for a section of the game that was taken out in the final copy. So it was just very, um, what do you call it? It was a very miserable experience. You know, that big old controller it, it, thing. The thing looked like, I don't know, it was just horrible. And then I remember hearing about the CD drive that was going to come out. And that caught my attention. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, surely the CD drive comes out. It's going to expose the true power that this thing possesses. And I really wanted to get it. Luckily, I never did. Because I heard the CD drives um, are notorious for you know problems. And the games themselves are just horrible. But yeah, the, the Atari Jaguar. I, I eventually sold it. I, I don't remember how I sold it. It may have been on eBay. It may have been through the newspaper. I don't know. But yeah. I really, really, really wanted that system to work and or to be popular and, you know, to be a true adversary within the console wars. But yeah, it it never came to. It was just a horrible, horrible experience. All the money that I wasted on it. Yeah. Oh, another I will say, one game that I did thoroughly enjoy besides Alien vs. Predator, Tempest 2000. I got that game just because there was no other game. I had money, probably birthday money, burning a hole in my wallet, and I wanted to buy something. So, as you know, a lot of us, you know, we would buy something just to buy something rather than not save it up for something we really want. I ended up getting Tempest 2000. And I popped it in, played a few levels, and okay, whatever. But eventually, that game grew on me, and I became addicted to it. I, I think I played up to level like 107 or something. I mean, I just, I wanted to beat the game. I never did. But that game, I, I really enjoyed. Uh, let's see, what else do I remember about the Atari Jaguar? I do remember all the commercials. <laughs> Interesting. Was it What was their slogan? Do the math. You know, yeah. Ah, uh, poor Atari. One time such a mighty giant in the video game industry and then reduced to practically nothing. I remember, um... Let's see, were there any other games? The one cool thing, um... A lot of the houses my parents had, no matter what game system I had, there was always a spare den or a spare TV room or something with a TV. So I could hook up my uh, game systems. And I could play without interrupting anybody. So I would spend a lot of my time in there. <laughs> playing Alien vs. Predator. Or Tempest 2000. Or trying to make myself believe that Iron Soldier was a truly phenomenal mech game. But yeah. That's just another memory I have. So hopefully you enjoyed that little story. 
Um, I'm not sure why you'd have any questions, but if you do, let me know. Until next time. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over.